So that is it, that's the basics of fat loss. Now we can use this information to gauge weight loss speed. When we reduce how much we're consuming to put ourselves in a calorie deficit, our bodies are gonna pay attention because most of us are thinking, okay, bigger deficit, quicker weight loss, right? But sometimes bigger is definitely not better. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that most of us can relate to the feeling that trying to lose weight can sometimes feel like a little bit of a minefield. Usually we start out with all the right intentions and then slowly but surely the self-doubt and the frustration really starts to creep in. Either you're doing all this work and seeing very little progress or you just have to try and trust that it's working or you simply just wonder how you're gonna sustain this for such a long period of time. And then very quickly that can lead into questions like, is this really worth it? Realistically, how long is this gonna take? And can I speed it up? I'm sure in one way or another, we've all asked ourselves the same question. And so in today's video, that is what we're gonna be answering. So we're gonna quickly run through the principles of fat loss, and then we're gonna talk about how quickly you can realistically expect to lose weight, and some of the pros and cons to different approaches of that. We're also gonna go through what you're actually looking at when you see that number on the scale and how there's many things that can influence that. And then finally, we're gonna talk about some of the predictors for successful weight loss overall. And then hopefully you will be set on your journey in weight loss, feeling a lot more confident with everything you're doing. All right, so let's run through the basics quickly. Now, if you want to lose body fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. This simply means that you are burning more energy each day than you are consuming. So we have energy coming into our bodies and obviously we have energy that we are using, so energy going out. Now the energy coming in, we get in through food and through drink, and then the energy that's going out goes out through multiple different ways and we call that collectively our total daily energy expenditure or TDEE. Now in regards to our body, when we talk about energy, what we're referring to is calories. So if you have the same amount of calories coming in per day as going out, that means that nothing is going to change and we call this maintenance. If you have more calories coming in than are going out, over a consistent and sustained period of time, this will lead to weight gain and vice versa, if you have less calories coming in than your body is burning, over a sustained period of time, this will lead to weight loss or fat loss. Now just a quick note that there is a difference between fat loss and weight loss and we will talk about it in a little while, but just bear in mind that those are two slightly different things. Okay, so we have an understanding of energy or calories in relation to fat loss or fat gain. So how many calories make up a pound or a kilo of fat? Well, we're talking about one pound of fat being 3,500 calories or one kilo of fat being 7,700 calories. Now we can use this information to gauge weight loss speed. So for example, if somebody's total daily energy expenditure, AKA the amount of energy their body uses every single day is 2,000 as a complete example, and they put themselves in a 500 calorie deficit every day. So what they choose to do is consume 1,500 calories worth of food, but their body is expending 2,000 calories. They're in a 500 calorie deficit. Now if we look at that on a weekly basis, so we're going to times 500 by 7, we're going to get to 3,500, so that means for the week their deficit has been 3,500 calories, therefore we would expect them to lose one pound of fat. Don't worry, that's as in-depth as any maths is going to go in this video. So that just gives you a bit of an idea that if you were in a 500 calorie deficit each day and you did that for a week, we would expect to see around a pound of fat loss. However, we'll go into it a little bit later, that may not happen and there are many reasons for that. So that is it, that's the basics of fat loss. If your deficit is a little bit smaller, that means we would expect to see fat loss a little bit slower and vice versa, if you have a bigger deficit, then we would be expecting to see weight loss a bit quicker. So you can scale it up and scale it down depending on how big your deficit is. And you can look at that deficit in any way. So if you were, for example, having a 200 calorie deficit a day, but instead you wanted to look at it as a weekly goal, then instead you could say that you want to see 1400 calorie deficit within an entire week, which gives you the flexibility to have some higher calories on some days and then lower calories on others. So basically on some days your deficit is a lot smaller, maybe you're even eating to maintenance, and then on some days your deficit is gonna be a little bit bigger, but at the end of the week it's going to balance out so that you were in the same amount of caloric deficit. Like I said, that's the simple science, but as always with our amazing bodies, it's not always as cut and dry or black and white as that. There is a lot more to take into consideration, so let's get realistic and get into the nitty gritty of how quickly you can realistically expect to lose weight. 
because most of us are thinking, okay, bigger deficit, quicker weight loss, right? Well, on paper, yes, that would be right, but there is always going to be trade-offs. And if you think about what caloric restriction does, you'll realize that sometimes bigger is definitely not better. When we reduce how much we're consuming to put ourselves in a calorie deficit, our bodies are gonna pay attention. They are going to do certain things and make changes to what they're doing to adjust to this lower energy intake. Initially, that might be as simple as making you feel more hungry. So having a bit of an alteration of your hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin, and also reducing how much energy you have to expend just in case there's no more food coming. Now, the bigger your deficit, the more you're going to experience these changes. And anybody who's been in that position before will know it is not a very sustainable or enjoyable place to be. One of the biggest reasons that diets fail, for lack of a better word, is because they're not sustainable. And so people set off with all the right intentions, changing so many different things and restricting quite a lot. And then they realize a week, maybe even a month later, that they just can't do that. They can't sustain that level. And so they end up just reverting back to what they were doing before. Aside from it being hard to stick to and really, really not enjoyable, you've probably also heard that saying that 95% of people that lose weight will gain the weight back again. And we often see this in extreme restriction when people are trying to get a result as quickly as possible so they can get it over and done with. There's an amazing quote actually that I saw the other day and it basically said, you've been trying a long time to do things the fast way, maybe it's time to take the slow route. And that is exactly the quote for fat loss, I think. If you try and do something in a quick and unsustainable way, ultimately you're just gonna spend years and years and years trying to achieve that. Whereas if you had just done it and taken a slow and steady approach in the first place, then you probably would have already forgotten about that period of your life. I know that I can definitely relate to that. There's been times where I was doing the meal replacement shakes diets and just skipping out on meals because I thought, you know what, quick and easy, but it isn't quick and easy. And ultimately it always resorted in me coming back to where I was. And it was only when I started implementing habit changes and thinking of it as a lifestyle without a set end goal that I really started to see progress. Not only that, but with extreme restriction comes physiological changes which can actually have a lasting impact well into the future in terms of your resting metabolic rate, which is a part of your TDEE. A good example of this is a study that was done into the participants of a TV show called The Biggest Loser. Now in this show, they go through a 30 week program where they have extreme caloric restriction and they also exercise every single day. So it's a very, very extreme approach to weight loss. Now in this study, they looked at them before the show, after the show, and then they also followed up with them six years later to see whether they had maintained their weight or that they had gained it back again. And what they found was a majority of the participants had actually gained 60% of their weight back. Now why this happened is not 100% known because there's so many variables that go into weight loss, but what they did find interestingly was there was a significant decrease in their resting metabolic rate, which is the amount of energy your body needs to expend just to be at rest if you just woke up and did absolutely nothing. So they saw a decrease in that number, which we would expect to see with weight loss because your body doesn't need as much energy requirements when it's smaller. But then what they noticed is as the participants regained the weight over a period of years, their resting metabolic rate didn't actually increase as much as we would expect. In fact, it continued to decrease. That meant that once participants had regained that 60% of their weight back on average, the resting metabolic rate that they actually had was nowhere near as high as what we would have expected to see of someone with that height, weight, and sex. Now what was happening here is what we call metabolic adaptation. This is a completely normal physiological function that happens when we lose or gain weight. And it's something that we would expect to see. But on an extreme scale, what they found was it had long-term effects, which meant that the participants that regained the weight were now in a position where they were unable to eat as much as their bodies felt that they needed to eat. And not only that, but they were also hungrier than normal too. All in all, those factors are gonna make it very hard to maintain the new weight. So it's not really a surprise that we saw weight gain. If you want to read about that study, I'm gonna link some down below, the ones that I have used and cited throughout this video. So you can check them out if you wanna do a little bit more reading of your own. Loads of other studies have been done into extreme caloric restriction or extreme diets. And a lot of it comes up with very similar results, saying that there's increased sensory overload, 
increased thoughts of food and increased hunger, which obviously is going to make it much harder to sustain and maintain that new lifestyle. Now these are extreme examples and they're not gonna happen if you're in a four or 500 calorie deficit, but it's good to have a little bit of an understanding around why maybe extreme diets aren't gonna be effective and having a slow and steady approach might be more beneficial. So you may be wondering, what is a slow and steady or a reasonable approach to weight loss? In terms of a calorie deficit, anywhere between 10 and 20% of a deficit is going to be a nice, healthy and sustainable number for most people. Now exactly how much of a calorie deficit to eat in is going to be completely different for everyone. There is absolutely no way that I would be able to tell you that without knowing some things about you and your lifestyle. What you need to do is find that balance where you're in a calorie deficit that is enough to notice a difference and to see progress, which will help in turn to keep you motivated, but also it's going to be sustainable. The key word really is consistency and sustainability. So eating enough that you feel full, that you feel fulfilled, that you can still have things that you like and live your life, but overall puts you in a calorie deficit. In terms of how much weight you can expect to lose each week, obviously, as you've learned, that's going to depend on what your deficit is, how active you are, and that balance between energy in and energy out. But a nice, healthy, and sustainable weight loss would be anywhere between one to two pounds a week, or 0.5 to one kilos a week. That is going to be the higher end of the range, but there's always going to be fluctuations. There may be weeks where you gain weight, and there may be weeks when you lose a lot less than that, Maybe there's gonna even be weeks where you lose a little bit more, but that is a nice little rough number to work with if you want to have something. But that brings us on nicely to talk about something that is really important, and that is the difference between what you're seeing on the scale, so your body weight, and your fat mass, which are two totally different things. So obviously when we're trying to lose weight, one of the key measurements most people take is a scale weight. Now this is telling us the weight of our entire body. That is everything. That's our food, our water intake, our clothing, our fat mass, our muscle mass, our bones, everything is included in that. And of course, because all of that is being accounted for, there's gonna be so many different fluctuations constantly. Scale weight day to day alone can fluctuate anywhere between one to two or three kilos a day. Now, when we're trying to lose weight, what people are referring to is they're trying to lose fat mass. And obviously the scale will reflect that, but it's also going to have included in it everything else that's in your body, which means it can sometimes be a little bit misleading and maybe a little bit off-putting. Here's just a couple of the reasons as to why you would see fluctuations or maybe an increase on the scales, but it doesn't actually mean that you've gained fat. So it could be things like what you've eaten, when you last ate, whether you've been to the toilet that day, how hydrated you are, the weather, how you slept, or of course, your hormones, especially if you're female, they fluctuate throughout your entire month's menstrual cycle. And so we're gonna to expect to see periods where you're going to weigh more on the scale and times where you weigh less. Again, we would expect to see these fluctuations and it is completely normal, but it doesn't mean that you've gained fat. So just be aware of that when you're weighing yourself on the scale, expect to see fluctuations. If you do see that it's increased, then that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing and it is completely okay. Alongside that, one last point is that you will notice that some people will find weight loss is quicker than others. And there are loads of different reasons for that. We are all completely unique, not one person is alike, which is why there's no cookie cutter approach or one size fits all to weight loss or exercise. Now, some of the reasons why we might see it quicker or slower in some people is the age of the person, the gender, what their metabolism is like, what their training history is like, how much weight they have to lose. There's loads of different things that can go into it and affect how quickly or slowly someone can lose weight, as well, of course, as the approach that they are taking to weight loss. In my own personal experience and my experience working with clients, everyone who is the most successful always takes a long-term approach to it. So thinking slow and steady, I know it sounds cliche, but it really, really helps to think of it as a new lifestyle, which I'll go into in a second, but really thinking about where I am today, what I can do, rather than trying to speed up the process and think of it as a temporary change. And that leads us very nicely into the last part of the video, which is predictors for successful weight loss. A lot of research into this area suggests that people who are most successful with their weight loss attempts are those that really start to put habits in place to live a healthier lifestyle. So take on that healthy life advice. Again, I've linked a few studies down below if you wanna go and check them out. But like I said, there is 
tons of research into this topic and it's actually really really interesting. So healthy habit forming was a good predictor of successful weight loss but also maintenance as well and that included things like introducing more nutrient dense foods into someone's diet, making sure that they prioritize sleep, increasing their general activity or non-exercise activity thermogenesis and also managing stress as well. Alongside that they also found that if you have more weight to lose then you're more likely to be successful in your weight loss attempts than if you have less to lose. There wasn't a clear understanding as to why that is but I know from my personal experience the less you have the more you can sort of think nah it can wait it'll be all right and that's very similar to the thinking of when someone starts to see progress for a couple of weeks they think they can sort of back off a little bit and they can have a little bit more relaxed approach to it usually that just leads back to the start again so again it all leads back to taking a really slow and steady approach to it okay so to sum up this video essentially there is no right or wrong number or approach to weight loss it's going to be as individual as you are but it's definitely important to take a slow and steady approach just don't feel the need to rush it and instead be a little bit easier on yourself and think I want to go and enjoy that social event I want to have a pizza every now and again or a chocolate bar so it's fine for me if it's going to take an extra couple of months maybe it's going to take me a year to get to where I want to be because I can enjoy the process and I know in a year's time I will actually have achieved it rather than going in really really hard having a miserable couple of weeks or months and then realizing you're straight back to where you started. I know it's almost eye-rollingly cliche, but try to focus on making a lifestyle and instilling and working on those healthy habits that are really gonna help build that lifestyle. Know that you may or may not see weight loss week in, week out, but that doesn't necessarily reflect your efforts and we would completely expect to see fluctuations anyway. So don't be stressed about it, but if you want a ballpark number to work from, anywhere between 0.25 to 1 kilo a week of weight loss is probably going to be roughly where you want to be. But don't be disappointed if there's a week where you gain or a week where you don't lose any weight. That is completely normal. I will keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. And my final point comes from me now being on the flip side of that journey. And that is that the goal that you're wanting to reach, when you get there, you'll realize that it's just a never ending goal. Like it's going to constantly be moving. Your goals and your interests are always gonna be changing. Your life is always going to get in the way just as much as it does now. And there's gonna be periods where you don't train as much and you eat a little bit more like Christmas time. And that's totally okay. And there's gonna be times where you tighten up the bolts and you pull it back in a little bit. It's just going to be constantly up and down. So you may as well just enjoy the ride as much as possible. All right, guys, that's what I've got for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned something or at least you feel a little bit more positive walking away from this video. Don't forget that you're doing an amazing job. I'm always supporting you. I'm so proud of each and every one of you and I will see you in the next video. Do you want to see the size of my cat now? Do you remember this cat? He was a kitten not very long ago. I mean, technically he still is a kitten. Look how picky he is.